And so I said to myself, I said, self, fuck it. Make your own version of the Alex Jones show. Hello, boys and girls. I have a special message for you from the President of the United States. America, fuck yeah. Coming again to save the motherfucking day, yeah. America, fuck yeah. Freedom is the only. So, the biggest gun control psyop in the history of the country, literally in perfect timing for the Hillary Clinton installation in 2016, 2017, we could get to see a Clinton gun ban 2.0 that will strip away uh, most of what's left of the Second Amendment. And don't run into the arms of the NRA, because the NRA has presided over the gradual curtailment of the Second Amendment. Everybody thinks the NRA is so great and so wonderful. Could it be that at some point the enemy sat down and decided to like become the opposition with regard to the NRA? And that the NRA really, at this point, is actually being kind of controlled by a tiny handful of people who I'm not going to talk about the board of the NRA, okay? I'm not going to talk about the, the board of the NRA. There is an externality to everything, ladies and gentlemen. And what my suggestion is, is there's a tiny hand of extremely influential people who are handling the NRA and have been this whole time. And the reason I'm using the word handling, I'm setting up a joke. All right. Uh, so they're handling the NRA for decades. And we've gotten to a point where the NRA has basically sat there and spoken for gun owners for decades and passively rolled over on all kinds of curtailments on the Second Amendment to the point where our gun culture has been bled out. The average person does not own a gun, not because they don't want to, but because they can't afford to. There's a million little cost-prohibitive restrictions now built into owning a gun. And when there aren't cost restrictions, when there aren't cost barriers to entry, there are logistical barriers to entry. But other people, people who have lots of money, the kind of people who can afford to have a gun safe full of fucking AR-15s, don't give a shit about all the other poor white trash. Oh, you people don't matter. Oh, yeah, what about the billions of other human beings on the planet? Are they all trash, too? They don't deserve to be armed, either. Let's just let the New World Order take over the planet and disarm everybody, starting with ourselves, because we don't give a shit about ourselves anymore. We're not America anymore. This is not America. Oh, we sang along with the Pied Pipers, didn't we? Yeah, that's right. Now, um, of course, the argument will be made, oh, guns couldn't have stopped this. You know, you and I both know that an EDC, a single determined EDC, and I don't mean some half a faggot like Yankee Marshall, who, most like most people in the NRA, is basically a gun enthusiast and is really just a, I don't know how this guy got so successful in the gun community, because he openly admits to being a 2A patriot. The only reason he has a gun is to defend himself, and his, like, immediate family if the shit really hits the fan. And I, I got questions about that, even. And there's a lot of people like him. There's a lot of gun enthusiast, hunter people who do not... They're not, like, really military-minded people. They don't... And they're not military... Like, they're not military-minded people who have woken up to the existence of the New World Order. Yankee Marshall is a, is a cutout. He's a perfect... He's not a cutout. That's wrong use of the term. But he's, like, a cardboard cutout. You know what I mean? Like, he's, uh... Ah, he represents everything that's wrong with our community. Anyway, I digress. Um, the timing of this thing, we can have, watch, for the next week and a half, people will debate, was it systemically promulgated? Was it a PSYOP? Here's the thing, folks. This thing was pulled off, you know, in, in like Orlando, you know, uh, right in a populated area. I doubt. It's like the Boston bombing, you know. Boston bombing would be a good example of, it's not like you could pull off. Like, they didn't actually grease a bunch of people. Because you couldn't pull that shit off in broad daylight. It's not like uh, Sandy Hook, where they sent in, like, a small team of guys to grease. I, we don't even know if there were any kids there. But there maybe there were some people there. And if there were, they got greased. By a fucking hit team who, you know, 
Um, who knows what the fuck went down? But my point is that this, Orlando, looks obviously like a false flag, but it's not, I mean, let's, let's not have a debate over the concept of a false flag. It is a false flag, but let's, let's not have a debate over systemically promulgated, uh, you know, obviously this guy, Omar, was being handled, we don't know who by yet, but was obviously being handled, he's a wind-up toy, it's systemically promulgated, uh, but let's not go all ape shit with, you know, space plane, space lasers and fucking holographic planes, okay? And shit like this. Let's not go all crazy and have a meaningless foreground debate over whether or not it was completely synthetic or just a, a systemically promulgated event with a wind-up toy. Let's not have a fucking debate about where on the spectrum the actual machinations of the false flag lie. Let's... Divorce ourselves from that debate immediately when dealing with this subject. Can we please do that? Can we get past the idea that the enemy pulls this shit all the time and stop having a debate over the particulars and the minutiae of it and just realize that they do it and have a debate about the codifying context, the codifying externality? Because here's the thing. We know this guy was being handled. Obviously, this guy was being fucking handled. He is obviously... And, and whether... You know, here's the thing. There's going to be people like who just go crazy and do shit like this because they are organically promulgated. It's like the systemic promulgation also involves media and all kinds of other little psyopery. And thus, you know, is there some Muslim out there right now who's an American, who, who hates America, who lives here but doesn't like it and hates the country and wants to shoot a bunch of people? And will he be tipped off at some point by the acceleration of of the tension, the the artificial acceleration of tension between Christians and Muslims, that the New World Order has been, get, they've been pulling this shit on us for thousands of years at this point, basically, okay, or over a thousand years at this point. They have been running the same fucking play. They've been throwing Hail Marys for a thousand years and you people don't fucking understand what's going on. It's like, I just, there's no hope because people are so fucking stupid. Um... Now, obviously, most anybody who's listening to this probably already understands everything I have to say, but nevertheless, it's important to sort of point these things out and lay all of our cards on the table, as it were. Um, I'm sorry, I haven't had my first cup of coffee this morning yet, so I'm not quite as energetic as I might be. Uh, right in time for the Clinton gun ban 2.0. Boy, you want a fucking, you want justification for a sweeping federal assault weapons ban? Oh, here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what? We need to retake the word assault weapon. And all these little pansies and nabby pamphers are like, you don't need an assault weapon. Yeah, you know what? You don't need to tell me what I need to do. You don't need to fucking tell me. Have I killed anybody with my assault weapon? Then shut up, dummy. Shut up. You don't get to determine. You have no idea what Magna Carta even was, let alone why it happened. Your understanding of human history comes to you from the fucking Discovery Channel. You have, your brain is an application that was programmed by Hearst Media, you freaking, you dummy. Oh, man. Oh, the average person is so fucking stupid. They have been, they were born, it's not their fault even, they were just born into it. They were born like that, that picture, I'll give that picture in here of the, that brilliant image from InfoWars with the octopus. And, you know, honestly, I've shined on InfoWars. I don't even fucking follow most of their work lately because it's like, it's become the Paul Joseph Watson show and he's just a fucking foppish ponce with just enough geopolitical understanding to, you know, be in the pocket, as it were. And it's disgusting. I hate, I, I said to, uh, I posted on uh, uh, John Rappaport's Facebook the other day. I love John Rappaport. I am not talking about John Rappaport when I say all this. He is an amazing individual with a brilliant mind, and okay, he has some failings in certain regards, geopolitically, macro, financially. Nevertheless, the guy's like, you know, he's he's as smart or smarter than Alex. Smart, you know, he is smarter than Alex empirically. He figured out the Snowden psyop, and and he he's pretty much on the same page exactly. With, he just doesn't have Alex's presentation style and capabilities. You know, Alex is a bit of a shallow pate. There's there there's limitations to Alex the penetration of Alex Jones's understanding. It's just hard for you know why most people think he's a psyop or something is because his his he has a knack he's a bulldog or he's a he's a hog he roots out truffles and he's really good at it but there are limitations there are hard limits 
you know, to the, the penetration of his analysis into these things. And, uh, you know, people think that he's, uh, he's stopping with, with the Israel thing. You know, of course he's, with, I say Israel. That's not the biblical Israel of other folks, the Zionists. He's talking about the Zionist subject. He does stop short. He stops short because we all know why. Uh, let's not go into the, the arguments why. So he's, he's compromised to a certain extent, but he's not a psyop. He's not a fucking, he's, he's not a threat. Him, Luke Radowski, and these, these characters, they're not waking anyone up. I mean, they're waking them up just enough so that they become recompartmentalized in some fashion. But they're not really waking them up. They're not exploding the geopolitical macro financial reality. Just vague references to the globalists, you know. I mean, the thing that gets me about Alex is that he understands the oncoming post-human Borg beehive probably better than 90% of the people in our community. But he doesn't... He trusts a lot of untrustworthy people. He puts stock in the opinion of a lot of stupid people, like Paul Joseph Watson. Um, and that, man, I just, I can't even fucking consume InfoWars anymore. I love so many of the guys over there. And then there's so many other people over there that I fucking hate. I don't hate them, but I, you know what I mean? Like, I just, get out of my fucking, get out of our community, you fucking dummy. I don't want a bunch of half a neocons and a bunch of trendy hipster dumbasses who who regurgitate the Snowden psyop. I, I don't want this crap. I want I want an environment. I want a news operation where a guy like Kurt Nimmo does not become recompartmentalized into the Snowden psyop because nobody supports his analysis. I don't. Want, I mean, John Rappaport. Nobody's talking about it anymore. They all just gave up talking about it because it's like with the. It's like with the autism thing and vaccines, you know what I mean? And just autism, whatever, disorder, and just the fact that we're jamming, you know, cytokine storm adjuvant cocktails into people, you know, um, when they're two. You know, it's like, it's just, at some point, and this is how the big lie works, you know? At some point, at some point, they just stage enough little gun control psyops and... We're all so busy. Like, you know why I'm saying this stuff about enforcers? Because everybody's over at Bilderberg right now. Dan Dix and Luke Radowski and, you know, the crew of InfoWars is over at, uh, you know, like, Jakari's good. And Darren's good. And I like Joe. And frickin', uh, um, Kurt Nimmo's amazing. Um, and then, uh, I forget who the behind the scenes, one of the behind the scenes guys. He's a really good guy. And he does a great job. Uh, Darren, Darren McBreen's video editing alone salvages that whole fucking operation that and alex's when he's actually in the zone and he's kind of doing like mid-range analysis the thing is he doesn't go far enough he never goes far enough for me if ors is fine for the majority of, of viewers they're never going to wake up more than that anyway i suppose and it does give us a nice crop from which to pull uh hyper awake people i shouldn't complain i shouldn't complain because we're going to have half a faggot neocons like paul joseph watson you know what I mean? We're just, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. We're going to end up with these fucking people in our community, whether or not we want them. So it's just gonna, guys like uh, Milo, you know, are going to end up being the voice of libertarianism because the, the audience is stupid. You know, you're not going to be, I'm talking to the audience. You're not going to be the voice of libertarianism. You who really understand libertarianism and are a, you know, decent upstanding person and a, and a, or, or a rabble rouser and a, you know, a lunatic, but a good Lunatic, a great American. You know, a guy like Milo is going to be. Because he's, uh, he's a cute gay dude. <laughs> That's how shit works now. Welcome to fucking reality, ladies. Get Prepare your anuses for the Clinton gun ban 2.0. That's all I'm going to say. This is, a, this is a public service message to the, to the gun community. To all people who believe in the Second Amendment and still understand the difference between a democracy, which is mob rule, and a constitutional republic, which is what our forefathers tried to give us, uh, this is a warning. This is a fucking alert. Warning. Warning. Red alert. There is going to, they're going to install Hillary Clinton. There's going to be a Clinton gun ban 2.0. Hide your fucking ammo now. Start digging the ditch in the backyard now to put your long guns in, ladies and gentlemen, because welcome to fucking... I don't know what this is. I don't know what they're going to do, but obviously they're going to put, like I said, they're going to put Clinton in. They're going to have a fucking banker bailout 2.0. It's going to be used to bring us closer to to negative interest rate territory. I mean, come on, folks. If you can't see the writing on the wall, 
the 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 timing tells you a lot not everything you need to know but damn near everything you need to know just fucking open your eyes and take a look uh indeed open your eyes and take a look slaves with the laptops and then they've got the goggles on and he's walking by with that predatory jackal grin feel the air feel the water you know walk in the grass before it's too late and everything everywhere is going crazy so we don't go out anymore we sit in the house and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller and all we say is please at least leave us alone in our living rooms let me have my toaster and my tv and my steel belt and radios and i won't say anything just leave us alone well i'm not going to leave you alone I want you to get mad. We have got to fight stand up. It's not going to be easy. But I'll assure you this. We can and we will and we must prevail. Allow me to attempt to state the problem to you in a very succinct manner that might be more readily graspable by the average person. All of the Americans have been captured. Captured. We are a hijacked society. It's not just the C-3PO protocol droids they put in, you know, the highest levels of office. It's not just the fact that they've got C-3PO protocol droids who are on the team running all of the major corporations in every sector of the global market economy. You know, it's not just that they stripped down and rebuilt China from the ground up as like a New World Order human laboratory. It's not just these things. You know, these things are just... Uh, what you really need to understand... What you really need to understand is the enemy is us. It is a war of ideas. Nothing, the sheepletard is the ultimate political weapon system. I have said it before. I've said it before numerous times. Um, I hate to just repeat myself, you know, and just regurgitate my own ideas. And yet... What else can you really do but to continue to just hammer home a point until other people also start to... Because I'm not looking for accolades. I'm not looking to become famous or something. I would like other... I would like to hear an echo. I would like to hear an echo. I would like to see other people making the same sorts of arguments and in the same fashion. You see... It's all a lot worse 
than what we believe. The enemy is us. Our apathy is the problem. The apathy of the the majority of a hum, uh, of a percentage of human beings in a uh, in a civil, given civilization. You know, the sheepletard is the ultimate. Think of it, the captured human, who has not been captured. The prison exists, but it is the walls are very far away, and it is more a prison for your mind, where you're being programmed to self destruct. Where it's Morlocks and Eloys, you're being dumbed down. You know, the way they didn't feed people in the Middle Ages. You know, they didn't feed the plebs so that the plebs and their children would be more sickly and less capable of physically uh, opposing the king's men when they came around to try to tax you. You know, not that taxation is theft. I mean, you know, it's perfectly fine. We've accepted that now, so it's, it's fine because we've accepted it, you know? Whatever you'll put up with, you know? How much tyranny will there be? Whatever you'll fucking put up with, that's how much tyranny there will be. And so, I think they sat around, actually, some, sometime in the 1400s through 1700s, and they came up with the idea, really the ultimate, they, we had a renaissance, and they had a renaissance. We had Magna Carta in 1776, and they had a shadow renaissance, and the shadow renaissance basically yielded a handful of ideas. We could talk about, you know, the sort of Luciferian transhumanist religion thing. I mean, the only, again, the only cherry you can put on the cake of total domination of totally owning everything and running all the markets. It's all rigged. It's all a giant debt hologram. The only cherry, the only icing you could put on that cake of total domination is to live forever. So naturally, transhumanism is the is the uh, mystery school of of these you know occultist quote occultists end quote. Of course, the modern occult Blavatsky, Hall, etc., uh, Crowley. It's just masturbatory. They're they're just they're they're posers. Uh, they're poser, they're posers, uh, Catholicizing the mystery schools, bastardizing and Catholicizing the mystery schools. I digress. Um, just babbling, meaningless. Nobody understands what the hell I'm doing. I might as well, I might as well be, uh, making animal noises, just grunts. None of it makes any sense to anyone anyway. What's the point? The sheepletard, though, this re this is the key thing. The renaissance of evil created this concept of the sheepletard, of the last man, as Nietzsche would say. A sort of innocuous thing in our minds, and that's the problem, because in reality, the sheepletard is the ultimate political weapon system. It is the means whereby... Power and control is maintained, sustained, and accrued. They have dumbed down the electorate in this country to the point where it is so easy to create a presidential reality show, as Gerald Salente says. I mean, imagine you're sitting around in 2013, and you know you're going to put in Clinton. You've got this whole Yellen, Lagarde, Clinton you know, go girl, uh, don't question the fact that we have to go boots on the ground in Syria and Iran, and we have to make sure Turkey and Ukraine, you know, gain a session to the EU, and that we encircle the Russians and heighten tensions with the Chinese, which is just a proxy of the New World Order. We're a hijacked nation, they're a proxy. We have to do all of this, though. We have to. Uh, otherwise, you, you don't like women. You're a misogynist. Hillary Clinton. Uh, Lagarde, unopposed. Another term, unopposed. Yellen. Punxsutawney Yellen. <sighs> we don't deserve guys like William Bonsai. We don't deserve... He should be... William Bonsai 7 should be the most famous artist on the planet. He should be the most... He is the most brilliant artist currently living on the fucking planet. The man should be a multi-billionaire. Just... He should be in control of, of the art on the fucking he should be dominating it should be his example that leads but again the audience is stupid so you know we get crap uh just as in music there's brilliant music out there but is that what's really successful no what we get is crap we get spoon-fed crap that's there to program us to self-destruct and the same is true of course in news even in the alternative news community 
uh, once again, to quote Chris, Chris Rulon, you know, basically anybody making any money in the alternative news sector is no good. Anybody who's making any real money, uh-uh. It's all the little guys who don't make dick. They're the ones, they're the ones who are doing the real work. They're the ones who have the fucking, the, the freedom, the wherewithal, and, uh, you know, the extensive wheelhouse, really, because of all that, because of who they are and what they are. I can't even get into it, but it's like, you know, it's it's like with the awake. You're like, how, how do people wake up? Well, the, one of the reasons that people wake up is because they're kind of broken. So the most broken people in the alternative news community who are unsuccessful commercially, they're the ones who are able to really be the renegades and the trailblazers, you know? And the problem with InfoWars is you can't... The problem with InfoWars, the business model, is you can't be cutting edge and commercially successful. I know what Alex says about, well, you, should broad, you shouldn't broadcast from a ditch, but there's a phenomenological and logistical and existential series of constraints that preclude you from becoming too commercially successful and too large. And it's all, again, it all goes back to the audience. The audience is not awake enough yet. In, in other words, InfoWars can't grow. It's, it has grown, but it has, it has grown into a, a mutant in a way. I love InfoWars. I love a lot of people over there, but it's grown into a mutant um, because it's attempting to grow too fast, too soon, or, or at least it really it's just a it's just a personnel mix problem. Um, and I, I'm sure a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's located in Austin, Texas. You're getting all these local Fruit Loops, you know, and then the one guy from Britain is like a Fruit Loop. You know, here's the thing: Wayne Madsen. It should be like Wayne Madsen, John Rappaport, Kurt Nimmo, Darren McBreen, you know. Jakari Jackson's a good presenter. He's a good guy, he's a smart guy. Actually, Jakari Jackson should do a gaming show and InfoWars gaming segments. InfoWars should talk about games. It's a huge fucking... Gaming is the, is the frontier of, of, enemy, of enemy programming, and we don't even cover it. Nobody even covers it. Instead, we're out there dicking around. Oh, we're at Bilderberg again. Look at us, guys. Oh, we're at Bilderberg... The, they're in there creating policy. No, you guys are like, how many times do I have to fucking hear this retarded meme? Nobody's creating policy at Bilderberg Dummies. It's a policy dissemination bourse. I know from fucking whatever though. I, but nobody listened to me. That's fine. Go ahead. Continue not listening to me. What do I know, right? It's like Louis Camersano. Oh, what does that guy know? He, he's a nobody. He's got, how the hell does Louis Camersano have 100 and small gold how does he have 180 fucking subscribers again because the audience is stupid so the people the really smart people who have really intelligent things to say and actual analysis go look at his analysis on jfk and silver for instance uh, cutting edge cutting edge brilliant analysis fucking paradigm shattering analysis uh 100 views something like that I and mean, he's getting he's getting more more play these days but my god my God, it's just the level of stupidity in the alternative finance and just alternative news community is, you know, and of course I'm just rambling here, but whatever. That's, that's, this is, this, this extemporaneous stream of consciousness shit, this is real, this is how actual work is done, is actually thinking about things. And, and really this video is me, I mean, yes, it's all, it's all in, in work, everything's a work in progress. I don't ever put anything to bed. No experiment is ever done. Just because you have assembled a series of proofs doesn't mean you're done testing. Doesn't mean you're done testing, ladies, with your limited proofs, your limited series of proofs conducted in one tiny little corner of a fucking solar system out in the fucking spiral arm of the fucking Milky Way. Oh, we know everything. We, we can extrapolate and understand how the entire universe works from tiny experiments being done in one tiny little corner of fucking space. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure physics doesn't vary at all. No. No, the universe is not. Here's what's crazy is that the universe is so complex. It's so inherently super complex that it's almost as if we're ill-suited to really... We're always making mistakes. We're always locking Galileo in a tower, and it's like it's part and parcel of our very nature. You know what I mean? And I believe we, we, yeah, you just have to embrace it. You have to understand that. And you have to, whenever you see anything or you're analyzing human psychology, you have to understand that that's an element of the matrix of human psychology. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you know, the sheepletard. Let's get right back. The sheepletard is the ultimate political weapon system. If you get enough sheepletards in any given country, let's like look at Brexit. They're going to, they're, they're going to stall Brexit and we'll have, you know, um, Turkey, 
Ukraine accession. And uh, they're going to put Hillary Clinton in, in the United States and we'll have Banker Bill. I mean, there's three things you need to look at. Uh, a dirt four under Clinton when they put Clinton in is a dirty bomb somewhere in the Middle East. Um, blamed on Iran, Syria, and Russia, and or Russia, one or all three. Probably Syria. That's where we want to go boots. So that's where they want to go boots on the ground next. Iran, of course, is a bigger target, but you know, nevertheless, car- uncartelized regions of the Middle East that need to be brought into the fold, like Iraq was brought into the fold. Now, uh, number two, banker bailout 2.0, uh, with its uh, American Spring, Black Lives Matter, uh, Occupy Wall Street, just like you know, Egypt and um, Libya, you know, prime examples, complete with Sergey Brin and whatnot and other. New World Order C three PO protocol droids the Angel invested into existence with DoD technology, uh, strutting around proclaiming how awesome their psyop mechanics work, how well their psyop mechanics work. Um, and number three would be a, a here we go gun ban two point That's the big story, ladies and gentlemen. Gun ban two point Welcome to Orlando. The Federal Reserve is a private banking cartel. The yeah, Fed is a sometimes very independent uh, organization. What should be the proper relationship between the chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? The Federal Reserve is an independent agency. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. They print our money and then loan it to us at interest. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers right. in charge? Besides that, the Second Amendment, it's not just about protecting our families, and it's definitely not about hunting and fishing or shooting for sport. No, the Second Amendment is there as a safeguard to protect us from a tyrannical government. Coincidence? I think not.